What is intermittent fasting? How does it work? And what does the research indicate about the efficacy and safety? Let's science it. Hey Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Intermittent fasting is a period of eating and not eating. Instead of focusing on what you eat, intermittent fasting prescribes a time frame of when you eat and when you don't. The three most popular patterns of intermittent fasting are alternate day fasting, the 5-2 diet, and time-restricted feeding. Alternate day fasting is when you fast for 24 hours and then eat ad lib for 24 hours. The 5-2 diet requires 24 hours of fasting on two non-consecutive days per week, with eating ad lib on the other five days. Time-restricted feeding designates particular hours of the day for eating, such as an eight-hour eating window with a 16-hour fasting period. This 16-8 method was used by actor Hugh Jackman to prep for his Wolverine role at age 44. And let's face it, Mmm, he sure looks strong. The common factor across all these patterns is that the food restricted period is long enough to metabolically enter the fasted state. Generally, we can divide metabolism into three states, fed, post-absorptive, and fasted. Around 12 hours after your last meal, you'll enter the fasted state. Now the liver has used up much of its glucose reserve. Fat tissue will break down and send fatty acids to the liver, and the liver will convert this fat into ketones. These ketones are released into the blood and can be used as energy. Since we don't enter the fasted state until at least 12 hours after our last meal, and we're constantly surrounded by food, it's rare to actually be in the fasted state. However, the ability to cycle between the fed and fasted state was selected for in evolution because food accessibility was unpredictable. Although intermittent fasting is trending right now, humans have been fine-tuned for fasting since our hunter-gatherer days. Intermittent fasting turned Hugh Jackman into a beast on the outside. But what's happening at the molecular level? Here are six underlying theories identified from studies in animals and cells in a dish. First, hormesis, in which a low dose of stress stimulates beneficial adaptations. Fasting is a type of stress due to dietary energy restriction. This is similar to the stress of exercise. In response to this stress, the animal initiates metabolic responses that make it more resilient. One of these responses is autophagy, auto meaning self, phagy meaning eating self-eating, or eating oneself. Through autophagy, you'll break down unnecessary proteins and damage cells so that their building blocks can be recycled. Think of it like decluttering. It's much easier to work efficiently when your desk is decluttered. Mitochondrial biogenesis is the creation of more mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell. Mitochondria are responsible for breaking down nutrients to yield energy. More mitochondria optimize cellular function. Animals have evolved daily fluctuations called circadian rhythms, which determine sleep-wake cycles and drive your organs to work differently depending on the time of day. Regular cycling between the fed and fasted state helps keep circadian rhythms synchronized so you can avoid the equivalent of metabolic jet lag. Intermittent fasting increases insulin sensitivity. This means that the pancreas doesn't need to secrete as much insulin to stimulate cells to take in glucose from the blood. Increased insulin sensitivity is a critical factor in mitigating type 2 diabetes. And finally, intermittent fasting reduces chronic inflammation. The synergy of all these factors are thought to increase health span in animals, or the length of life without disease. But there are differences between mice and men. What is the human research on intermittent fasting? There are millions of people around the world who practice intermittent fasting as part of their religion. During the month of Ramadan, many Muslims follow time-restricted feeding by fasting during the daylight hours and only eating before dawn and after dusk. Observational studies show an average weight loss around two and a half pounds during the month, though this weight is regained in the following weeks. Short-term studies of alternate day fasting and the 5-2 diet show weight loss and improved insulin sensitivity, but these studies have been too short to know whether these effects are sustainable. Some of the weight loss is attributed to reduced caloric intake because people don't fully compensate for their calorie deficit from fast days. 
but are there benefits to intermittent fasting outside of just calorie reduction? In one study, healthy, resistant trained athletes were all given the same amount of food and then divided into an eight hour or 12 hour eating window for two months, along with three training sessions per week. The eight hour group lost more fat mass while maintaining their lean muscle mass and reduced inflammation. One concern is that intermittent fasting could lead to a loss of lean body mass, but this study supports that incorporating exercise can preserve muscle. So there are many physiological benefits and some promising human studies. Should you try intermittent fasting? Since our bodies evolved to deal with this type of stress, it's probably safe for most people. Some specific populations who should avoid intermittent fasting are children and adolescents who are still growing, the elderly because they're susceptible to muscle loss, individuals who are underweight, and anyone who has struggled with disordered eating, such as anorexia and bulimia. It's really challenging to come away with one overall conclusion about intermittent fasting in humans, because the studies have been small, short, and have used a wide variety of fasting patterns. As of March 2018, the research can't come to a consensus yet. My nourishable hypothesis is that time-restricted feeding has the potential to be one sustainable health tool to help prevent adult weight gain and reduce chronic disease risk. But based on an abundance of long-term evidence, I continue to prioritize a healthy diet and regular physical activity regardless of eating timing. But I'm keeping my finger on the pulse of this intermittent fasting research. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. I'm going to try out the 16-8 time-restricted feeding, so subscribe to Nourishable to follow my personal N of 1 study and stay up to date on all things nutrition.